So welcome, welcome. You guys already are in for a great treat because God has an amazing guest on the show today. So she is absolutely one of my sweetest friends. I'm so happy. God is so good. He redeemed the time. Thank you, Lord. So you guys don't know her yet, but you're going to know a lot more about her because the Lord has been using her mightily in a great way this season. So I'm Welcome, welcome. You guys already are in for a great treat because God has an amazing guest on the show today. So she is absolutely one of my sweetest friends. I'm so happy. God is so good. He redeemed the time. Thank you, Lord. So you guys don't know her yet, but you're going to know a lot more about her because the Lord has been using her mightily in a great way in this video. So I'm going to bring on my beautiful friend, Portia, and I'm going to let her just say a little bit about herself as she's led to do so. But I'm super excited that she's on this episode of Money Motivations. And you guys saw the title in the intro, but it's basically simple. Okay, it's how to pray as a wife. So let me introduce you to my sweet friend forever, Portia. Hi guys! Oh my gosh, I couldn't be more excited to be here with my forever friend, Jalisa. I know you guys watch her Monday Motivations all the time, just like me, and she is such a blessing in my life. We actually got a prayer call every Saturday, so I'm just in love with her, and I'm just so in awe of what the Lord has for you guys tonight. Like she said, my name is Portia, I've been married for seven years, and I'm just so excited to see what the Lord is going to do tonight. So, welcome, welcome, welcome! I am a lovely wife to a man of God for three years before coming up, okay, in July, okay? I am a new mom to a precious baby girl, my miracle baby, and I'm actually an ordained minister alongside my husband, so I just thank the Lord. I'm not looking forward to tonight. It's going to be so powerful because God is in the midst. The Holy Spirit leading everything, and Jesus Christ is our Lord, okay? So make sure that you stay tuned and watch the entire video cover the first topic about how to pray as a wife right let's talk let's talk about number two so write this down foundation of marriage god's way okay let's get to it so the scripture verse that i got is from proverbs 24 6 chapter 24 verse 16 excuse me it says pleasant words amen pleasant words are as an honeycomb sweet to the soul and health to the bones ladies it's in the bible you can't come for me talk to jesus it's in his word okay it says pleasant words are as an honeycomb sweet to the soul and health to the bones so that means there is life in what you speak it confirms it there's life in what you say there's life in how you say it all right let's talk about it delivery so god's foundation is this so let's go back to ephesians this is god's foundation of marriage god's way okay it says ephesians chapter 5 verse 22 wives submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the lord so press pause okay your husband is not your God. God is your God. Your husband is not your God. God is your God. You reverence your husband as unto the Lord. You respect your spouse as unto the Lord. Okay? You submit yourself as unto the Lord. Submission is not a bad word, ladies. It's not That, that does not mean you're a slave. No. It means that you are respecting and honoring the mission, the call, the anointings, the giftings, the, the, the purpose of your marriage. It's a kingdom marriage, if you choose it to be so, under the law of Christ. So that's what submission is meaning. It means you 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 refrain from, you know, I know he didn't just say that to me. Oh, I could do this better than him. No, that ain't cute, sis. You look crazy. Submission is, babe, you got it. I trust you. I believe in you, babe. I support you. That's being submissive. You're honoring your husband. You're allowing him to be the head and you to stay in your place and be the beautiful wife that he married. Now, let's go ahead and go down to verse 23. It says, for the husband is the head of the wife. The Bible does not say that the husband is you know, authoritative or that he's mean or cruel or that, oh, what he says, it just goes. No, the Bible says, for the husband is the head of the wife, 
even as, see, there's a comparison, meaning he is a model and an example of perfection. See, watch this. Even as Christ is the head of the church and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, verse 24, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Okay. That means the bills, okay? Parenting, okay? That means family. Protect your peace, ladies. Protect your peace at all costs, okay? But also, verse 25, husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. See, there's a give, and there's a, there's a, there's a give, give in the relationship that I keep seeing with the Lord. There's a give, give. He gives his holy begotten son, and he gives the world has only begotten son. He gives us life more abundantly. He gives us free will. He gives us prosperity. He gives us romance. He gives us love. He gives us intercourse, married people only. He gives us sweet friends. He gives us newness. He gives us tender mercies. He gives us goodness. He gives us mercy. There's a lot of gifts, right? So as a wife, if God is calling his women of God to pray for their spouses, why is there a pause? Why is there a hesitation? Why is there like, well, Lord, he didn't do X, Y, Z, and why I got to pray for him? Honey, this is your marriage. If you want a change in your marriage, it requires God to change you for you to become who God needs you to be so that your spouse can grow into who God has called him to be. See, it's a team effort. Okay, that's why it's so important for you to know the foundation of marriage God's way so that you can represent Christ in a great way. Any comments, sweet friend? Yes, and you know what? That was so good. Y'all know what? God is going to give y'all a husband that brings out your ugly side because that is what he wants to change inside of you. He's not going to give you someone who won't challenge you. He wants to give you somebody that's going to help you grow spiritually in him because at the end of the day, he who finds a wife finds favor with the Lord, right? So do you think the Lord is just going to change your husband? No, he's looking at you too like, yeah, you keep complaining about him, but what about you? Because it's not a one-sided street. It's a two-way street, right? Because if something needs to change in him, then guess what? I guarantee you God's going to show you what he wants to change in you. So just be open to that. And stop. All, it's not always your spouse. I know sometimes you're, you are like, oh, he's getting on my nerves, Lord. But why? Why is he getting on your nerves? Ask the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, why is... Why, is, why am I so annoyed with my husband? I guarantee he's going to show you your heart before he even shows you her, his husband's heart. Because best believe the same way he's going to deal with your husband, he's going to deal with you first. Because you can't pray for somebody with the wrong spirit. Your heart has to be pure and genuine towards your husband. And just like my friend said, Luke 6, 6 and 49, but anyone who hears and doesn't obey is like a person who builds a house without a foundation. When the floods sweep down against that house, it will collapse into a heap of ruins. So answer this. Is your house built on the foundation of Jesus? Or is your house built on the foundation of you? Because when the enemy comes to attack your house, it's going to fall. Because you're not covering your house you're supposed to cover your house. That's what the Proverbs 31 woman do. You're supposed to pray that house down where any demonic spirit that try to come up against the house can't even come because it already got the blood of the lamb on it. And they already know they can't touch God's anointed ones because you know what? A praying wife is better than anything a man can ever have. It, better than any gifts, better than any luxury items. And most of y'all be over here on social media like <laughs> marriage goes, marriage goes. Why are you idolizing other people's marriage? No, make sure your marriage is on a firm foundation before you try to idolize anything. And better yet, you shouldn't even be idolizing someone else's marriage because what glistles and glams on social media is not real life, boo. So be careful of who you idolize because the only person you're supposed to be idolizing is the Lord himself. Because the Lord, that's a sin, by the way. But just make sure... Your house is built on the firm foundation that is in the Bible. Because if not, guess what? When the enemy will come, he's going to come, kill, steal, and destroy. So will that be your marriage that fall? Or do you want to make sure your, your house is built on that firm foundation like the Bible talks about? Amen. That was powerful.
powerful friend so since you went there let's go ahead and go to the next topic because this is like awesome sauce so the third and final topic ladies is prayer is our lifestyle okay this is not a duty it's not a hobby Okay, it's not a, oh, check off my, my vision 2021 goals. No, it's not a, oh, my vision boy prayer life. Okay, oh, I did it. Let's post on Instagram. Oh, I'm praying. No, okay. It's serious. It's, a, it's lifestyle, okay? Like my friend was just talking about, we're not here for no highlight reels, okay? Mm-mm, no. We're, there's two souls in a marriage that each of you have to work out your own salvation, okay? Choose ye this day who you're going to serve. Not mammon. It has to be one or the other. You can't do mammon and your husband and the world and people and people pleasing all this other mess. Uh uh-uh, uh, honey. No. Pick one. Choose ye this day who you are going to serve. Choose. Let's go to the scripture verse that will really help us understand. Prayer is our life style, meaning it is a consistent way that we love on Jesus. It's what moves us to even want to be better wives, want to grow in our marriages. We want to develop. I look at marriage like going to school. You know, it takes uh, different levels and grades for you to accomplish certain, you know, understandings about subjects in life, right? It doesn't happen in the blink of an eye. It doesn't happen overnight. You know, I believe it takes time. You should be studying your spouse as you would study, you know, law, you know, or study medicine or study you know animals or study you know psychology whatever God's get to do in that area you would study it like the word of God we meditate on it we study it we want to understand God we want to understand that the inspiration of God himself he breathed life into our bodies we want to understand who our creator is why he created us we want to study and meditate and learn right we want to learn your spouse and study your spouse okay so let's go to ephesians chapter 5 verse 25 and 26 and then 33 husbands love your wives even as christ also loved the church and gave himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word see ladies you want to be washed by the water of the word, cleansed, just like a good shower. You know, like a good shower, a good soaking bath, get all of the toxins and, the, and all the dirt and all the sweat that you're working out, getting your 2021 body in. You know what I'm saying? Get all the makeup off, you know, that enhances your beauty. You know, get all of, you know, just the day of work off of you. See, the Lord, he comes in and he washes us as white as snow. And all of the former ways of us all the old ways praise god it just washes off of us and we become new creations in christ jesus so when you're praying you want to make sure that it becomes a common way that you approach the day so i love to start the day off with prayer i love to just pray to god and say thank you for waking me up because I can't wake up myself. So clearly, Lord, you allow my body to wake up at the exact timing my heart is beating. My brain cells are transmitting messages to my entire body to move my hand, to talk, to look, to, you know, position myself, to understand the word of God, to read the Bible, to hear, to operate this phone device, to operate this video, to edit, to talk to my friend. All of that you're doing, God, in, in just a moment's time, right? See, when we acknowledge the goodness of God and the trueness of God of what he really does in our hearts and our lives, it positions us to be in a reverence towards God where we just want to pray to him because he's God. We would desire to pray for our spouse because the Lord Christ himself gifted us with the spouse so that he knew there would be a day, a time, that we would come together and lives would be changed. So, and your season at hand. You may not know the purpose that God has for your marriage yet, but it will come. You may not understand that you're going through that rift rift right now, but you're going to understand that it's building you. See, you're going through a season of pruning, of refinement, of restoration. See, you're learning that you do, in fact, need Jesus. You don't need a husband. Husbands are amazing. They're wonderful. But you don't need a husband. You desire a husband, and God can gift you with a husband. But what you really need is Jesus. So let's go to the last scripture for tonight. 
Nevertheless, this is Ephesians 5, by the way. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself. And the wife see that she reverence her husband. See, God wants to change your spiritual eye gates. Ladies, stop looking at what you see in the natural. Stop with the carnality. You're a spiritual being in a fleshly body for a temporary period. So God wants to shape your eye gates to understand that you are actually blessing your marriage by praying for your spouse. Because see, you have direct access from the Father about what's really going on in your husband's heart. See, the Holy Spirit will share with you what your spouse is dealing with, what he's going through. If he is not comfortable expressing it to you just yet there's a time and place for everything and the delivery of how you say things matters the timing of when you ask certain questions matters and just allowing your husband to lead matters allowing your husband to know that you're there for him that you are concerned about how he feels you, you are thinking about what he wants for dinner that day you know like it matters to you that you want to wash his clothes or, or fold the clothes or however you guys work that out in your marriage that you cook his special meal when you know he's been going through something that's really difficult for him to talk about openly. But you can love on him and you can enjoy intercourse with him and you can allow God to open your eyes to see your spouse as your friend. Because Jesus calls his believers their friends. So would you be able to look at the idea that God wants you back to him and the love of the father through your spouse is pruning you, is stripping you away from all the old ways that you used to do, all the old curse words you used to say. Mm -hmm, I've been there, girl. The Lord could do a mighty good way. He wants to make sure that you are not who you were before so that you can grow into the woman of God that he needs you to be so that when to become one. They're a dynamic duo. What do you want to add, Portia, before we close out? Friend, you just did that, okay? Listen, just like Jaleesa said, why it's so important to pray. Have y'all ever read James 5 and 13? I mean, this scripture is mind-blowing. It says, the title is the power of prayer, okay? James 5, 16, earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produce wonderful results. By the way, I'm reading from the NLT version. With your spouse, and the Lord will make you well. And if you have committed any sins, you will be forgiven. You know what? If you committed adultery, if you had an abortion without your husband knowing, whatever you did, open your mouth and pray because the Lord hears your prayers. You want your marriage to be better? Open your mouth and pray. A closed mouth don't get fed. And that's my saying. So you open your mouth and the Lord himself will hear you and heal you and heal that marriage. He will bring restoration to your marriage. He will bring whatever you need in that time. As long as you are doing his will and you believe sincerely in your heart that the Lord himself will do it, he's going to do it. I have seen the Lord save so many marriages. And that's why I can, he even saved mine. That's why I was, I'm like, the Lord is real. Open your mouth and pray. And don't ever stop praying because one slip up, one day that you might not pray, that's when the enemy can come in. And you don't want to give Satan no room because I know he ain't got no room over here. So he can take his tail back to hell with his little demons and go about their business. So make sure you are always praying for your spouse. Pray for you. I go by this. I pray for my spouse more than I pray for myself. Because you know what? The Lord is pleased with that. That pleases the Lord when we intercede for his kids, his children. Because at the end of the day, we're all the Lord's children. So open your mouth. And if you don't know how to pray, because you know what? When I became a Christian at first, I didn't know how to pray. I went to this this uh, book, The Power of the Praying Wife. And my pastor loves this book. So go get a book that help you pray. Open your mouth and say, Holy Spirit, help me pray. You know what? The Lord don't even care about your words. He, look at, he looks at your heart. He already knows what you need before you even come to him anyway. So 
My main thing is open your mouth and pray for your spouse. Pray for him like never before. Whatever you want, God is going to give it to you. Especially if it's if it's marriage, because God designed us to be with a husband. He designed marriage, so why would He let your marriage suffer? That's not our God, girl. Yes. And one last thing before we close out, friend. God just put this put this on my heart, and He just showed this to me, and I was like, "Wow, God, you're good." Okay, so really fast. It's in Luke chapter two, verse is thirty six through thirty eight. Really fast. It says this. Wow, God, you're so good. And there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phineal of the tribe of Aser. She was of a great age and had lived with a husband seven years from her virginity. And she was a widow of about four score and four years. Wow. Which departed not from the temple. Catch this part, y'all. But served God with fastings and prayers night and day. And she coming in that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spake of him to all them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. Friends. While you are married and you can see your spouse in the land of the living, pray. Don't waste time. This prophetess prayed day and night. Pray is God. My heart. I mean, I don't know what is life without prayer. I gave this phrase to my friend before we started this and it's so powerful. And I'm, could I share it, Lord? Okay. So it's this phrase that I really enjoy. And it's, you know, seven days without Prayer makes one weak. And I'm talking about W-E-A-K, like weak, like weak. Okay? So without your prayer in your actual lifestyle, how can you be strong in Christ? How can you stand firm and have your full armor of God on when, you know, that little that little pipsqueak enemy tries to come at you in your marriage? Girl, you got to stand firm and stand strong for your marriage. And when you do pray for your spouse, pray with your whole heart. Don't just say, okay, I pray it's a great day. Like, uh, like pray with, you know, passion, with compassion. You know, Jesus had compassion for us. You know, pray with compassion. Pray, you know, pray with a fervency. You know, pray with, you know, purpose. You know, and after you pray, of course, thank God and gratitude and love on the Lord and worship if you're led to do so. But believe God. There's so many times where we miss out on our blessings when we just don't believe God. If you're believing God to have his way in your marriage and your spouse to be saved, believe God. If you're believing God and trusting God to, you know, move into a house, hey, I'm there. I'm, I'm trusting and believing God, you know? Like, you have to believe God. Because without the belief, it's impossible, you know, for you to move forward in all that God has for you to move into with your marriage because it's growing every day. You take it day by day, okay? So make sure you're believing in what you're praying for. Make sure you're asking the Holy Spirit, you know, to clear out any clutter distractions or anything that's not of the Lord. Remove that, you know, and forgive, y'all. Forgiveness is big. So make sure when you are praying to the Lord that you ask the Lord to, you know, forgive you for any unforgiveness. You know, remove that out of the heart, girl. You don't want nothing in there, them feeling suppressed, okay? Mm -mm. We want to forgive, okay? Let go, let God relinquish it to the altar. Like, cast your cares, Peter 5, 7, cast your all of them, okay, honey? All of them, okay? Nothing, don't keep nothing 2020, okay? Cast all of your cares to the Father, and forgive those people. Forgive the father that was not there for you, that you wanted him to. You wanted him to be there, but he wasn't there for you. Forgive him, okay? Don't let your spouse pay for the mistakes of someone that didn't know Jesus, because hurt people hurt people. So you can't allow what you've been through in your past and your seasons, and you know those situationships in the past. You know the, those booty calls, and you know in the past. You, you know y'all know what I'm talking. Y'all know what I'm talking about, okay? You can't let all that stuff. Get into your marriage. Rebuke that. Resist the enemy. Okay? He will flee. You have to forgive yourself. That's really huge. Okay? So forgive yourself. Okay? No condemnation. See, there's no condemnation for those that love Christ Jesus. He wants all of you, honey. Not parts of you. Not sometimey you. Not Easter, Sunday, Christmas Day you. Okay? 
Let's get it together, okay? Let's be consistent. Let's hold each other accountable. Let's be loving to our spouses. Let's commit to praying this year. 2021, the year of prayer, okay? Let, let's commit to praying with a fervency, praying with compassion, praying with joy. God understands our emotions, our feelings. He gave them to us. He, he gives it, you guys. But let's come to God with belief in Him, with full expectation that God will do it. Because He's God. So, before we close out, friend, any last comments or anything that you would like to say? And I'm going to pray out. And I pray you guys had a blessed time. Ooh, girl, that was a whole mouth full. Did y'all hear that? Hurt people hurt people. Y'all better stop bringing them exes to the marriage bed, man. Y'all better rebuke them soul ties in the name of Jesus and get y'all stuff together before you're trying to be somebody's wife anyway. Ooh, that was good. But look. Y'all better anoint y'all bed before, okay? Anoint y'all bed. Get some olive oil out that cabinet and plead the blood of Jesus over y'all bed. So y'all don't have to worry about people that hurt y'all in the past that didn't know Jesus. That was a good one, friend, okay? Like, seriously. Don't let them people in the past, don't let them ex-boyfriends make you mistreat your husband, the one that God blessed you with. Just like you might feel like you a blessing to your husband, he's a blessing to you as well, sis. So don't get it twisted. Ooh, that was good. Let's pray out, friend. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this phenomenal video that you have orchestrated. Father, I pray for your daughters in the name of Jesus. I pray for just a war in them. I pray for them to go hard in their prayer lives for their spouses. I pray that they will go with the fullness of you, Lord. I pray that they will reverence their husbands as unto you. I pray they'll respect their spouses as unto you. I pray that if any thing that is not of you i rebuke it right now in the name of jesus i call their marriages blessed and holy and restored and renewed in the name of jesus i pray off every single soul tie hallelujah i pray it off right now in the name of jesus i pray off every hurt father i pray that they cast that to you in the name of jesus for you are the restorer father you are our jehovah jireh father lord you are a provider of all of our needs father so i just pray right now father for your sweet daughters that they would cling towards you for the bible says submit yourselves therefore to the lord resist the devil and he will flee draw nigh unto thee and he will draw nigh unto you don't be double-minded sisters stand firm and who you are believing in don't falter don't look to the left or the right. Look straight ahead towards Jesus. Don't look at the waves like Peter. Just look focused ahead to Jesus and he will carry you all the way through. Lord, I pray for an even deeper quickening for the wives to know that their spouse is their best friend. They don't need this world. They don't need to be people pleasers. They don't need immediate gratification on social media or clubhouse or Instagram, Twitter, whatever it is, Father. I just pray for less distraction and more attraction to you, God. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus. This is the year of prayer, the year of fervency, the year of revival in the name of Jesus. I pray for your, your daughters to come back to you, Father. I pray for this season. For there to be a deepening of intimacy, not just with their relationships, not just with their marriage, but with you, God, because you are all that we need. And we thank you for Portia. I pray a hedge of protection over her beautiful marriage. I pray for an even abundance of joy for her marriage. God, I thank you for her being willing to pour out to the women of God. I thank you for her time, for I don't take it lightly for marriage. I pray for an even abundance of joy for her marriage. God, I thank you for her being willing to pour out to the women of God. I thank you for her time, for I don't take it lightly. I thank you, Father God, for just her heart posture towards you. I pray blessings over their marriage in the name of Jesus. I pray for peace that surpasses all understanding. And I thank you for the mind of Christ upon her and her husband. Lord, have your way in that home and i thank you for this video i pray the channel will reach who you want to reach in jesus most precious name we seal these prayers father
Amen. Delisa, so thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for pouring out to these women. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And this will not be the last time. So, Lord, we just thank you for another day. We thank you that the people who are watching this channel will be blessed by the words that Jaleesa and I have spoken, Father. We thank you that the Holy Spirit will go out and restore marriages, Father. We thank you that anybody who may have a heart season or a heart marriage right now, Father, we thank you for just bringing total restoration to them, Father. Father, we thank you that they can call on your name and you will answer them, Father. We thank you that you know their needs right now, Father. So we thank you that the Holy Spirit will just comfort them in this time and they will know that you are there to help them. You are not their enemy, Father, but you are there to help them because marriage is designed your way. You love marriages, Father, and you hate divorce and divorce is not from you at all, Father. So we thank you for putting a hedge of protection over all everybody who watches this video's marriage father and we thank you that their marriage is blessed and it will fulfill the will of the father in the name of jesus and lord we just thank you for jaleesa just blessing us with her presence on this channel father we thank you that everything that she poured out that you will refill her father in the name of jesus and we thank you father that she is blessed coming in and going out father and she is the proverbs 31 wife father the true definition Lord. So Lord, we thank you and we seal this prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. I am looking forward to the next one, girl. Until next time. Bye. Blessing.